Hi everyone, I am Alejandro Carcel López, Application Engineer at Entopology. And today we'll, we're going to be discussing how with Entopology, you can reach unprecedented performance and save time and money when it comes to optimizing aerospace assemblies. We'll be using a nose landing gear assembly as an example, and we will optimize it for additive manufacturing for some of the components. So to give you a bit of context on why I picked um, this subject, recently uh, Safran Landing uh, Systems and SLM Solutions have partnered to produce a nose landing gear main fitting for a business jet by using additive manufacturing. They've printed this component in a titanium alloy, which is durable, has very good uh, mechanical properties, and is corrosion resistant. They claim that they have reached a weight reduction of 15%, but not only that, also it, has contrib it can contribute to save a lot of time in qualification and certification phases because of the rapid testing possibility that it brings. And by saving a lot of complexity in terms of tooling, that we had in the forging process, we actually can produce the part in a few days instead of in a few months. That is something quite interesting. Um, so it gave me an idea for this Entop Life, and I'd like to uh, discuss with you how Entopology can help you benefit fully from additive manufacturing. By the way, if you wanna check out more about this information that I just shared with you, please visit 3D Printing Media or 3Print-com or 3D Natives. You'll find more information there about this um, case of Safran and SLM Solutions. But now I'd like to discuss with you the anthropology workflow when it comes to design for additive manufacturing. So we start with our design space, which is our, our uh, main nose landing gear fitting. So the first question is, how should I infill this part for IT manufacturing? We are using IT manufacturing. We don't want to produce a solid part. We want to take advantage of the complexity that is enabled through the hardware. So we need to choose an infill and we can do that by using homogenization, which we have discussed in other NTOP lives and, and we have some information in our blog as well. You can use that in NTOP to evaluate different unit cells and see their stiffness behavior and select the most convenient one for you. Then you can rapidly explore different design alternatives and couple those with simulation in order to automatically evaluate the performance of that design. And then you can make use of field-driven design, which is a very uh, specific, special feature that we have in NTOP. You can automatically modify your infill, for example, modifying the thickness or the density based on simulation data. This way you reach a very lightweight design while increasing the structural uh, properties, the, the performance structurally. And not only that, but with NTOP, you can automatically in your workflow generate data that helps you make decisions fast. Weight savings, structural performance, but also build cost and build time estimations. All of that integrated in the same process, simulation, uh, cost, time, weight savings, all together is a very powerful approach to design the best way and the fastest as possible. And also for aerospace folks, we, we know that um, certifi certification and, and validation is extremely important. Otherwise the part will never fly. With NTOP, we have made it very easy for you to export your design to validation tools for certification. For example, because I have experience with Abacus, I did with Abacus here. We can take the part there, do more complex simulations like nonlinear, crash simulation, etc., contact simulation. Okay. And then we can also from NTOP export manufacturing formats like a mesh or a sliced part. So all of that in the same workflow is a very, very a uh, holistic approach that allows you to take all of this complexity and possibilities into account in a very fast, efficient, easy manner. 
So as I said, the first step of this workflow is to choose an infill for the part. You can find more information about homogenization, but I basically use this approach to um, select a walled gyroid. So as I said, I won't be going in detail today, but you can watch this um, video by Jonathan Harris, who explains very well the homogenization concept and how we can evaluate the stiffness of the infill very nicely, very fast. So I chose the wall gyroid because it has a great stiffness to weight ratio. It also provides quasi, quasi isotropic behavior. So basically, even though you're much more lightweight, your structure will behave as if, as if it was solid, basically. Also, this uh, infill is self-supporting, which is a great advantage for metal additive manufacturing. And all, also, there's a lot of ongoing research and characterization of these unit cells for metal additive manufacturing. So it'll, you, you have a lot of data that you can use for your simulations, for your predictions when designing with this sort of uh, infill. All right, so what I did is once I chose my infill, I wanted to explore a little bit what was the effect of shelling the part only with no uh, infill. And what we see is that if we only shell the part, as probably you would have expected, we have a very, very good weight savings, obviously, but extremely bad uh, structural displacement. These structures are not stiff at all. We have very high displacement values with respect to the solid model, very high stress values due to the, the high deformation. So this, it's interesting to see that we need something in there, right? We, we can't just shell the part. That doesn't make sense. If we only remove the upper part and then we keep the thickness everywhere, we, we get something a bit more interesting. We only decrease the weight by 14% with respect to the solid reference, but we have a more acceptable behavior in terms of stiffness and stress concentration. But here's where it gets more interesting when we start applying these engineered infills. So, I used it with the two concepts. With the, I, I applied it to the solid part and also to this part where we removed, where we emptied out this upper part. And I compared the results. And basically, what I found is that this is a bit more interesting because this lattice here, which is not very heavy, can actually uh, absorb part of the hydraulic pressure impact. And then the other thing is by using field driven design, we can. You see from this um, part that has the gyroid infill, but is not graded at all. The infill is just constant everywhere. We can obtain the stress data and automatically increase the thickness based on that stress data. And when we do that, we obtain much better stiffness and stress distribution properties. As you can see, the, this design with the shell and field driven gyroid has extremely good weight savings, almost 50%, and is very close in performance to the solid model. So we chose this as our, as our part of interest. By using field-driven design, we're only adding 10% of weight, but we are increasing the stiffness 76% and in improving the stress distribution by 66% only by adding 10% of material exactly in the regions where we need it. So this is the power of field-driven design. And with anthropology, this capability is straightforward, effortless, and you'll be able to design like this all the time with any part, with any infill. So as we said, this is the best trade-off. Um, also, we could add some holes in, on, the, on the top of the part for pow uh, powder removal, <laughs> not power, it's a typo, powder removal, um, of course. And then if you need to cover those holes, you can do it with plugs or you can weld them. We've seen clients doing both. So it depends on you, but there's options for you to remove the metallic powder after the uh, manufacturing process. And as I said, in NTOP, we are able to do estimations in terms of cost and time. So this part takes about 194 hours to build based on, on, on the parameters that we uh, hypothetically suppose here based on the information we have. And then a cost of about $40,000 for the part. So all of this integrated into the workflow, very interesting. As you see, 
a lot of information is being provided from the beginning on this very complex part. So very, very fast way of determining if your design process, if your design, the design that you're creating makes sense or if you need to make some changes to it. Finally, as I said, we export the part to Abacus for validation and further analysis. I compare the same static analysis on both Anthropology and Abacus, and we are basically obtaining the same results for stiffness and for stress. So the added value of exporting to Abacus is true that for static analysis, we have the same results in both software packages. But in Abacus, you can do nonlinear simulations. So it's interesting for you if you want to do more advanced analysis to have this ability to export to, to uh, advanced simulation tools. And the best part of this is not only we can apply this to this specific main, um, main fitting of the North Landing Gear, but with NTOP, you can go ahead and optimize the whole assembly if you want. Of course, um, we need to take it little by little, but I'm just showing you all the value that you could achieve in the whole airplane, for example, if you start applying this concept to all assemblies. So we can shell an infill, all sorts of components. We can topology optimize uh, rods and, and brackets, and we can do things like conformal ribbing and, and reducing the thickness for panels like the, the landing gear door. So with the same for additive manufacturing, typically we can decrease the weight of whole assemblies by 30 to 50% and meeting structural requirements. And with anthropology, you can uh, reach unprecedented performance thanks to the field-driven design capability. And not only that, but you can quickly explore a lot of design alternatives and do this very fast. According to some of our clients, up to 10 times faster or even more in some cases. So to wrap it up with anthropology, we can unlock new performance possibilities by easily creating engineered, manufacturable, structural infills and uh, adapt those to the, their parts. We can quickly design in, uh, many possibilities and explore which possibilities make more sense thanks to implicit modeling and built-in simulation capabilities. We can automatically generate meshes and and for very complex geometries, which really makes it so much easier to have this interaction between design and simulation. It really enables and speeds it up a lot, especially for this complexity. So using field-driven design and varying your infield properties based on data, on simulation data, you can meet your structural requirements while adding very little weight. And then you can, with NTOP, export very easily to other software packages for certification, Abacus, Nastran, ANSYS, LS Dyna, and you can automatically generate meshes or slices as an export for additive manufacturing. And as I said, you can estimate build time, build cost in your design process, very early in your design process. So that's a very powerful capability. So this is the presentation that I wanted to show you today. I will just jump quickly into the software to show you very fast the workflow. There's a lot to it, so I won't be able to show it to you in detail, but you will have the uh, files available for downloading in case you are interested in digging into those. If you don't use NTOP yet and you're interested in, in knowing more about it, please contact us. I'll be happy to demonstrate you this workflow live or other workflows that you might be interested in. Uh, we can offer also a trial if you want to try it on your own. So don't hesitate to contact us and, and start bringing value as soon as possible for your applications. And I just want to show you quickly um, in NTOP how you see, so using the simulation from, from, the, from the infill part, when we actually go to a field driven part, you see we are adding thickness in the regions where we have high stress we reduce the stress concentration so much. It's amazing. We're only adding 10% of weight, but our structural performance is 60 to 70% better, as we saw in the presentation. I just wanted to show you quickly the design in Abacus being analyzed. We, are, we can do the section cut, see the inside, see the infill of the gyroid, all of that. We can analyze in detail in this um, specialized validation tool. So I hope that you found that interesting. 
uh, again, if you want to know more about this workflow, contact us. We're very happy to, to do a tailored demo for you. All right, so thank you for your attention and see you next time.